Live Scope for Beginners. That's right, Garmin Live Scope, or okay, Garmin Panoptics Live Scope, which is their second generation of Panoptics, however you want to explain it. I ran that this year for the first time ever. Uh, I was tired of not having all the latest technology on my boat, and for my you know 2021 Bassmaster season, I ran a Garmin Echo Map 102, and I had a Live Scope with it. Just to give you the quick basics, this is not an installation video. This is how to set up your Garmin Live Scope. There are a zillion videos out there. I can just be totally honest on a bunch of different ways to put your settings. You want gain on this. You want your TVG on that. You want your noise reject on this. You want your ghost reject, whatever the ghost reject. We're gonna go through all that. There's not one steadfast way to do it. I'll just, I'll be a little spoiler for you, uh, but you wanna have your your, gar your black box for the Garmin Live Scope. You wanna have that in a safe area uh, in your, you know, like in your rod locker or somewhere like that. And then there's two different places to mount your, your Garmin, actually three, uh, two main ones. You can either mount it on the barrel. If you look down here, now I've got, I'm, a, I'm doing some testing out here. So I've got active target up here, but this is on the barrel of your trolling motor. Um, this, I did, I put that down there because I've got the 360 on, on this boat as well. And I wanted to get those transducers away from each other. But if you don't have a 360, I would highly recommend mounting it on the trolling motor, either right here on the little mount that does like that, or the one similar to the active target that you can use in perspective, the perspective mount. I would probably go with the perspective mount personally, uh, if I didn't have 360. So just, that's kind of that, the basics there. But then when you come up here to the front, uh, you get all that, you get it all hooked up and you get it all correctly. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll drop the trolling motor, put it in the water. All right, so once you, once you drop your trolling motor and you wanna set it up from the beginning, you wanna set it up to the, from the very beginning, you're, you've got the, the Panoptix screen pulled up. Uh, I've already got most of my stuff dialed in uh, the way I like it. And you know, I fish a bunch of different by, you know, depths, a bunch of different lakes. To me, this has been the best setting to get it to get it initially set up to where you don't have to monkey with it and you don't have to play with it every time you go anywhere. So as soon as you put it in, you're gonna hit you're gonna hit that menu button and then gain. On your gain, I like auto medium is a good place to start because it's gonna adjust based on the water conditions and um, you know the different stuff in the water. Uh, you, you're gonna have to really, I put that on auto, then I go back to menu, and then we're gonna go into sonar setup, sonar setup right there. Then I'm gonna go uh, to appearance, and appearance, it's hard, it's hard for me to beat amber. I really like amber, and then your color gain is gonna be default as well. That's gonna adjust. Then you're gonna go to noise reject, off, turn that off and then we're gonna go to TVG if you can get away with going turning it completely off I mean look you got a little fish swimming around over here turn the TVG off if you're getting too much noise then you can go you, you might have to go low that would be the first thing I would do but I would start with it those off and then your ghost reject or reject ghost I don't know which one that is uh, you're gonna go off there as well you're gonna go off there as well. And you can see, I mean, there's a fish right there swimming uh, down there in 15, 16 feet of water. You can see him swimming around. We lost him because he swam out of the beam. But uh, that's, pardon the jet ski boat wake, uh, folks. Pardon, pardon that. Come back here in a pocket and you get to jet skis. You gotta love it. Um, but then uh, that's basically all you're gonna, you're gonna go, go with. Uh, okay, a couple more things. You're gonna have your depth range Auto is the way to go because uh, unless you're fishing the same depth range all the time, I wouldn't, uh, I would just leave that on auto. You're going to leave that on auto and then your, your forward range, I like to set out at about 80 feet. Um, you can definitely cast further than 80 feet. If you're in really clear water like the Great Lakes, you, you may want to run that up to 100 feet, but 80 feet is a good place to go. If you're running it back to 60 feet, you're really, you're really not seeing all that far. You're seeing just a little ways out in front of the boat. Uh, you know, if you're crappy fishing, maybe fishing closer to the boat, that might be better. But if you're bass fishing, 
I feel like 80 feet is kind of the, the way to go. If you go auto, man, that thing's gonna go back and forth and it'll, it'll drive you crazy uh, for me. But as you can see, uh, you can adjust your, uh, your length right here with the 80, 80 feet, or you can adjust your, your gain, your color gain right there. And, and then that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's not, there are a bunch of settings and guys are gonna tell you your gain needs to be at 58.2 or 71 or 85 or 92, you know, ZY banana hammock twice. I don't know what, you know, they, they'll tell you all these different numbers, doesn't mean anything. Uh, to me. I've just gotten out there. Um, you know, David Mullins is a Garmin guy. He's gone through a lot of the Garmin training, Garmin Pro. Uh, Brian Schmidt, another Garmin Pro. Uh, they're good friends of mine. Those are the two guys that I've leaned on the most for, for my information. I've also talked to uh, Daryl at, at Garmin um, and really kind of gotten a feel for, for some things from him. And then I've put, in it, I've put all that stuff that they've told me together and I've probably adopted more of what David Mullins has told me uh, because he leaves a lot of his gain and all that stuff at auto, cuts all the filters completely off. So what you will end up getting, if you look at the screen again up close, is that you'll get some of this right here, this interference, because all of the filters are off. You'll get a little of that, but what you gain is all this clarity out here. See, I mean, we're, we're talking 60, you know, 70 feet from the boat, We've still got clarity to where we can see fish. You know, um, I'm gonna scan around, look, you know, there's there's a lot of good clarity right there. I could I could run some of those filters on and get a lot of that noise out of there, but I'm not gonna see the clarity. You see, like you know, there's some small bait fish and things right there. I'm running around. Yeah, there's definitely a lay down. That's a lay down right there, lay down tree. I'm getting a little interference. I'm up against the bank. The water's a little turbid right here. There's definitely times you'll get a lot cleaner picture than this. But uh, let's get out off the bank and run around. I'll show you some more of what you're supposed to be seeing. All right, now, as, you're, as you can see, we're out here, a little deeper water. And look, way out here, 60 feet away from the boat, we're scanning around. There's fish right there swimming. You can see how crystal clear that is. As we get, once we got off the bank, you can see that wagon wheel there's just little traces of that wagon wheel. All our filters are off. They're all off. And you can see, I can see crystal clear all the way out there to 80 feet. Let's run it on out there some more. I'll show you. We'll go, we'll go 100 feet. It starts to break up at 100, but you can still see, you know, the bottom and some different color, you know, things. We're going to move around a little bit. All the way out there, 90 feet. If there's a fish out there, you, it would pop. It would pop if we hit it right on the right on the head. You know, and see, look, there's some fish out there at 60, some cover. But you can see there's fish right there, suspended, about 12, 13 feet deep. See him swimming around, he's swimming down. That's, uh, that's some really, pretty cool detail. But, uh, you know, normally I just use about 80 feet because that's what I know is going to be crystal clear. So we're moving along, and what I normally fish with I'll put that, sometimes I'll hit the TVG on low. It'll clean up the screen just a little bit, but it's not gonna filter out too much. So that's the TVG on low. You can see there's fish right there. You know, kind of, they're kind of getting into that wagon wheel a little bit of interference. And there's a fish right there. You can see them moving along the bottom. That little hard, a little hard signal. Try to move around. But for me, a lot of times I'm looking for cover more than I'm looking for fish with this, uh, with the live scope. But that's, that's what you should expect. And I'm gonna look over here, there's a dock up here shallow. There's the dock piling. There's the dock piling right there. You know, we were looking right that way and then you can pan over there and look and see there's the dock. And it's not far off the bank. So you can look back down, you can see that's crystal clear over there, you know, 50. 50 some feet away, that's a pretty good ways away. Um, so if you're, you're expecting to see crystal clear and, and you know, paint a picture of fish up under there, that's not uh, really what I use it for. If the water was crystal clear, the water's a little dirty up in here and you're still, be, you're still able to see all of that on the bottom. You know, once you get out here, 
you know, then you're seeing your fish out here and you can see, you know, a little, little cover right there, but that's the, that's the basics right there. That's the, that's the basic setup. Um, that's kind of what I've developed throughout the whole year. Is my way the best or perfect? No, I know it's not. And every lake, every river, every condition is different. If you, whatever you set it up to the shallow area that you might be fishing, you're gonna go to a deep clear lake, you're gonna have to change your settings. Or you could leave it in auto just like I do and no matter where you go, you're gonna get a good consistent picture. Is it the best? Maybe not. But it's gonna be good and consistent no matter where you go. If you just kinda of wanna turn it on and forget about it and see a good picture, set it up just like I did. Uh, it's kinda of how David Mullins told me how to do it. Uh, I've, like I said, consulted with Brian Schmidt and, uh, and some people from Garmin. That's what they've told me. Uh, so I've kind of developed my own and it is definitely the best for a bunch of different places you go. So that's the basic Garmin setup. If you have any questions or anything like that, drop it down there in the comments. Let me know. I'll try to answer them or I'll try to find out for you if I don't know the answer.